Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Behind the Glasses. I'm your host, Giovanni Barba, and I have with me a very special guest, a really good friend of mine. If you saw my previous video, part of the same segment, I answered questions related to the intersectionality of LGBTQ identities and blindness or disability. So I have with me here a good friend of mine who I met last year, and I thank you, Daisy, so much for taking the time to be here. Mm -hmm, of course. <laughs> so I'm going to ask Daisy a couple of questions just to give you guys a different perspective and someone else's point of view. So it's not just me talking and you won't get bored of my voice. Daisy, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit? Tell us who you are. Just, you know, just a little bit about yourself. Sure. So I'm Daisy, of course. I am a student at San Francisco State University studying race and resistance studies as well as Spanish. I am blind and queer identified. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, I guess we can just start off with the questions. Are you ready? Yep. All right. Well, let's start with question number one. Again, these questions were uh, posted through various forms such as Facebook and my fellow teammates. So let's see what they have to say. First question, what do you look for in a partner having a disability and being LGBTQ? Um, I don't know if it differs for me too much than like I, what anyone would look for in a partner is a lot of kind of personality traits that, you know, you look for, um, you know, appearance things that you look for. But I think if we're bringing in kind of the fact that you're incorporating disability and LGBT. I tend to look for people that are a lot more open-minded. I tend to gravitate towards people that seem really comfortable with the concept of disability, which doesn't need to necessarily mean that they know a ton about blindness or whatever disability it is that you're dealing with. Just that, you know, they're curious and they're comfortable talking about it and they're super open to learning. Uh, thank you so much. Next question. Do you think that the cross-section of identity has brought any stereotypes into your life? Hmm, that's a good question because I think there's, you know, quite the range of stereotypes in kind of each identity. Um, I don't know if it's brought a ton of stereotypes, kind of the intersection, at least in the experience that I have had but I know it tends to bring a lot of confusion, which kind of dives into the topic of the way people think of disability and sexuality. They're not typically things that society thinks of as that, you know, can live alongside one another. So I think that's, I don't know if that's a stereotype or if that really answers the question, but I think yeah. Often the one thing that I notice is that. Yeah, it totally does. I, I kind of feel the same way about that one. How sometimes they're often seen as being two separate, distinct things. And when they're brought together, it's, it's difficult to fathom it. It tends to confuse people, yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, the following question is, do you have any role models that share this intersectionality that you look up to? I don't really have any role models. I actually, up until probably, I don't know, five years ago, didn't know anyone who was specifically blind and a part of the LGBT community. Granted, I grew up uh, fairly sheltered in like a very conservative city and things like that. So there wasn't as much exposure to really people living either identity. Um, so I wouldn't say that I have role models, but I say that in the past few years, I've made lots friends with communities that kind of inspire me with their ability to live both identities openly. Mm, good point, good point. Do you have people that share this identity that give the intersectionality a bad rap? Like I said, I don't know a ton of people that, you know, have those two intersectionalities. And the people that I do know I am friends with, so I, I don't think I know anyone that, you know, gives it a bad name or any that does anything more that I would disapprove of than you know someone who is straight and is blind or etc. Okay um, here's the next one. Since coming out and trying to connect with others in the LGBTQIA community how has being blind affected your reception? 
Um, I think it's similar to kind of trying to connect in any other community. There's always kind of that disability layer that comes into it. There's a lot of times people who are non-disabled tend to be unsure or uncomfortable with the presence of a disabled person. And that doesn't necessarily go away if you're like kind of in a queer space. I think that can still be pretty prevalent and it's been one of the challenges when I've tried to, you know, put myself out there, go to pride events, go to different, you know, support group things and things like that. Um, it's kind of trying to find people that, like I said earlier about finding a partner that's super open, also establishing friendships is trying to find people that share those personality traits. Do you feel closer to the disability community or the LGBT community? And if so, why? I.e. included in, active, or represented by? Um, represented by, I feel closer to the LGBT community only because I feel like that's kind of an identity that nowadays I'm a lot more open and out there with and kind of something when I think about the intersectionalities that define me that's at the top of the list. But in terms of feeling included and the community that I'm most involved in, I would say the disability community, just because I work in the disability community. I have many disabled friends and just kind of unintentionally, that's been what I've been more involved in. Have you found safe spaces for blind and LGBTQ identify? Yeah. I think that's a pretty new concept to me. I've recently in the past couple of years come across a couple of you know LGBT plus disabled or LGBT plus blind support groups and things but I admittedly haven't participated in too much of that just because of scheduling and nothing to do with you know the groups themselves um so I think safe spaces are starting to pop up a little more I think society as a whole is becoming more aware of the inaccessibilities of a lot of spaces that queer folks tend to frequent like you know, bars and pride, which are not necessarily the most accessible for all types of disabilities. So I think there's more awareness and there's more of an effort to include disabled people, but I don't know that we're necessarily there yet. Okay, yes. And hopefully soon we will start moving in that direction and have mm -hmm. those spaces. Definitely. And here we go, the final question. Do you find that you can be LGBTQ in disabled spaces, but not the other way around? That's an interesting question, and I, I feel like it really comes down to the people in those categories that you surround yourself with. I have had more success being LGBTQ in a disabled space, and, but I have also had negative experiences, you know, with fellow blind people, fellow disabled people when they, you know, have found out about my queer identity. But I think, like I said earlier, when we were talking about finding inclusive spaces, um, feeling included in the LGBT spaces as a disabled person can be a little bit harder just in terms of kind of breaking through that, breaking through that blindness and making that not be the focal point, if that makes sense. Right. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. You gave very elaborate and wonderful responses to my <laughs> questions. And not my questions, but the questions that were posed to me. So thank you so much again for taking the time to do this. I really appreciate it. Of course. Hope the answers were yeah. helpful. I hope our viewers find this really interesting and eye-opening. <laughs> Excuse the pun. So with that, I guess I will say thank you to everyone. Thank you to you. And we will see everyone in the next video. Bye, everyone. Bye. Ciao.